Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks, why does somebody stay with a narcissist? Right? This is a question I've actually received a number of times. One of the tough things about being, especially in a romantic relationship with a narcissist, is that it's extremely painful, yet a relationship has kind of a stable quality to it. So a lot of people want to leave those relationships, but they don't. And there are a variety of reasons why that's the case. So before I get into these reasons, I'm first going to just review narcissism very quickly. So I'm just going to put grandiose and vulnerable narcissism together here and just describe some of the characteristics. So with narcissism, we see arrogance, a sense of entitlement, needing admiration, being low on agreeableness, so disagreeable, being self-centered, having lack of empathy, being manipulative, deceitful, and jealous. And really all these are fairly important to these different reasons I'm going to give for why someone stays with a narcissist. So I'm going to divide these reasons into two parts, right? So for the first part, it's really just the same reasons that we would see for people staying with people in general, right? People do tend to stay together when they're in a relationship. And regardless of the type of abuse that occurs, these same factors may be at work. So, for example, here, financial security. This is a very common reason that somebody would stay with a narcissist or anybody. You work to build up investments into real estate, into vehicles, into other property. So financial security and accumulated wealth are important factors. Another factor here, another reason would be optimism, right? People tend to hope for the best. So they tend to stay in relationships because they expect something good will be coming along shortly. Commitment, again, relationships are about commitment. So if somebody's committed, then they tend to stay with their partner. Not wanting to sacrifice the shared dreams and goals, right? So the big house, the perfect job, buying an RV and traveling around the country, growing old together. These dreams are more attainable if someone stays in a relationship in many cases, especially those related to building financial security. Because if you leave a relationship, depending on how long that relationship has been going on and how much wealth has been accumulated, there may be a large loss there, right? So divorce or separation is expensive. Another reason would be love, right? People are in love even if someone's a narcissist in that relationship. Right? That doesn't really change the love necessarily. And similarly, affection, sex, stability, just in general, like not necessarily financial stability, but just having a stable life in terms of coming home to the same person and the same routines and things like that. Sometimes people just come to the realization that just because some needs are not being met, that doesn't mean that all needs are not being met. Right? So it's just having that realization and deciding to stay. And this is similar to something I'll talk about around narcissism in a moment. We see if a couple has children, that makes separating or divorcing complex. There's the perception of family, friends, the outside world in general. People tend to look at a failed relationship and blame both people, even if most of the fault or all the fault is with one of the people. We see the trouble of separation and divorce. I touched on this. It's financially costly. It's emotionally painful. There's a lot of logistical problems with like family court and if that's involved and property division in general. Where are you going to live? How has it changed the routine? There's just a lot of factors with separation and divorce that are more than just a little inconvenient. And the last general reason here is the concern that you might not find anybody better than the narcissist or that you will be living on your own and that'll make you miserable. So again, these are the general reasons. So moving over to the more specific reasons, the reasons tied in with narcissism, the dynamics of being in a relationship with someone who's narcissistic. Well, the first reason is the superficial charm did its job, right? Narcissism is associated with superficial charm. So narcissists can be very impressive in the short run, but tend not to be impressive in the long run. This is not only for impressing a potential romantic partner, but also interviewing for jobs, and other kind of social constructs, like other situations that involve relating to people. Narcissists start off very strong. So 
Again, with this reason, the superficial charm just did what it does. It was effective. Next reason is some people tend to see the best in other people. This is kind of related to that optimism piece I talked about before, but also people believe what they want to believe, right? If somebody wants to believe that their partner is not narcissistic or that eventually they'll change, which of course they may change, then people are going to believe that, right? So we see the best in people and we tend to believe what we want to believe. The next reason is the narcissist convinced you that you're the problem, right? This is extremely common. This is one of the manipulation components of narcissism called gaslighting. So what the narcissist does is they look at you and say, because of your behavior, this is why the relationship is in trouble, right? So you're really the problem. And they give you reasons for this, and they're actually quite convincing. So if you're convinced that you're the problem, you may want to work on that first before you end that relationship. But because you're not really the problem, you can't make any progress. So essentially you're stuck, right? So gaslighting is extremely effective in keeping a couple together when one person is a narcissist. Another kind of related factor here is that the narcissist has used other people to convince you that you're the problem. So it's not just the gaslighting delivered by the narcissist, but they employ the help of parents, siblings, children, friends, coworkers, and neighbors. Narcissists don't mind complaining about you, so this helps them make allies. So in a sense, they're striking first, and they're making a more convincing argument. Sometimes in terms of how we decide who to believe when there's two stories, it's just a matter of who came and complained first. The next reason is that you've invested in the success of the narcissist. The narcissist is actually part of your identity. In a sense, their success is your success, and their failure is your failure. So from a manipulation standpoint, this is actually another clever aspect of narcissism. They know how to leverage your loyalty and your commitment. Also, they tend to be successful, right? Narcissists often do well in employment and business environments. So you invested in their success and they obtained it. So in a sense, everything went to plan, except for all of the horrible narcissistic abuse, which of course you did not expect. The narcissist did a good job of hiding their true nature. Again, that superficial charm is very effective in the short run. The next reason has to do with the jealousy I talked about before. So one of the characteristics of a narcissist is they tend to be jealous and they tend to believe other people are jealous of them. And one of the ways we see jealousy manifest is that they are jealous of potential romantic rivals. And so what this reason is really getting at is their jealousy at potential alternative mates directed toward those mates makes you feel good. That jealousy is interpreted as meaning that they love you, they care about you, you're special to them, rather than their insecurity and their attempt to control you. So jealousy can make someone feel special. So again, just another effective characteristic of the narcissist in terms of keeping relationships together. The next reason is the narcissist has convinced you that you will never find anyone else who will put up with you. So this is different than the reason I talked about before and the general reasons. This isn't a concern about finding just anybody. It's a concern about finding someone because you're not good enough, right? You've been told by the narcissist that you are bad, evil, useless, intolerable, flawed, worthless, lucky to have them. So again, kind of all this gaslighting. And this has made you think, well, if I'm this bad, then it may be hard to attract another mate. So you may want to leave, but that concern is still there. Another kind of variant of this is they need you, right? So in this kind of narcissistic expression, you would be a horrible person if you left them. So sometimes it's just as simple as a guilt trip. You worry that if you leave them, they will fall apart, they'll have all kinds of problems, it'll be bad, which of course may or may not be true, but either way, it's a matter of what you believe. The next reason is the narcissist has performed just well enough to make them acceptable. And what I mean by this point is, so the narcissist has all these kind of abusive characteristics, but once in a while, they use a kind of a grand gesture. They do something romantic or something caring or it seems caring. And 
it kind of brings you back in, right? So they do poorly most of the time, but they have these moments where they just seem like they're connecting back to how they were when you first met. So really what they're doing is they're bringing back that superficial charm. In reality, a narcissist knows your breaking point and they know when they need to bring that charm back. So they behave in a selfish way. They do what they want to do. They see that you're reaching that breaking point. They don't really want you to leave a lot of times. So they turn on the charm and that can be extremely effective. That type of reinforcement schedule can motivate somebody to stay in a relationship even when it may seem like a bad idea in so many other ways. The next reason is that being with a narcissist is very tiring. There's a lot of fighting, arguing, strife, a lot of negativity. So you just become tired of fighting. You're simply worn down, fatigued. You don't have the energy to leave or to do much else. So really, in essence, it's about surrendering. And this is actually a common result of narcissistic abuse and many other types of abuse. In essence, this is what the narcissist may want to happen, and they're trying very hard to get that to happen, so it makes sense that sometimes it's going to happen, right? It's a logical conclusion to the pressure that the narcissist continually puts on. Again, their strategies are quite effective, right? We see that narcissists often win, and this would be considered, of course, by their standards, a win. Now, the last reason is kind of similar to one of the general reasons I gave. This is that you've made a calculation and the results indicate that staying makes more sense. But what I mean by this is you made a calculation including the narcissistic behavior. So even seeing through the manipulation and getting an accurate assessment of the values of all the variables, so to speak. And when weighing those results, it just makes sense to stay. I think this is overlooked a lot. There are a lot of different types of abuse, not just narcissistic abuse. And all types of people stay with all types of abusers all the time. It's very common. If that's the calculation that somebody makes, especially if they've seen a counselor to help them determine, again, what those variables are and what those values are, then staying could be the smart move. Maybe if you left, you would just end up with another narcissist or things would be worse off for some other reason. So sometimes the benefits really do outweigh the costs. I think this is really highly dependent on how much narcissism is present and how much abuse is occurring. I would hope that if people make this decision, they continue to work to improve their situation in that relationship, but sometimes it is just a calculation and math doesn't lie. Now in a situation where somebody is with a narcissist, whether they decide to leave or stay or whatever, I think that counseling is almost always a good idea. Narcissists have incredibly high loyalty to themselves. And when you're in a relationship like that, it's good to have somebody in your corner a counselor who is loyal to you, someone to listen to your point of view, someone to think the best of you, and help you to work toward your goals, not necessarily the goals that the narcissist sets for you, but the goals that you determine. Now, sometimes those line up with the goals of the narcissist just through coincidence, but again, helping you to meet your goals, helping you to set those goals and put a plan into place so that you can achieve them. So loyalty is important. And again, we don't really see that with narcissists in terms of being loyal to their partners. We don't see that too often. Their loyalty is inwardly focused, right? The narcissist, again, is quite loyal to themselves. So I would say it makes a lot of sense to have somebody in your corner and counselors have the training to provide good support in a situation where somebody's romantically involved with a narcissist. I know whenever I talk about reasons people stay with narcissists and other questions like this, there'll be a variety of opinions. People have had different experiences with narcissists, examples where staying with a narcissist made sense, examples where leaving a narcissist made sense. So again, there'll be a variety of opinions. And I would hope that you could put those opinions and thoughts in the comment section because that generates a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of reasons that people stay with a narcissist to be interesting. Thanks for watching.